Hello everybody, this is Scott Roberts and Cliff Whitney here with Atlanta Hobby. And uh, uh, Cliff joins me tonight from Atlanta, Georgia. Um, really happy to have you on tonight, Cliff. It's great to be on your show, Scott. Yeah. I, I appreciate the invite and, and all you're doing out there for the industry. Oh, I really appreciate all you're doing out there for the your community as well, you know. Um, uh, we were on earlier uh, talking about uh, our passion for, you know, certainly my early passion for aircraft. And, um, uh, you know, uh, I think that had to be spurred on by my interest in astronomy, in um, space flight, you know, being an Apollo kid and uh, just loving the beauty of flight itself um, and the beauty of aircraft. Uh, you have, uh, you in particular like, uh, uh, love gliders, you fly gliders, uh, now. And, uh, I mean, uh, this, this, we're in your store. Uh, I mentioned that I would be in there all day. So this is, uh, you have a beautiful <laughs> store. Um, but, uh, before we start talking about, um, you know, your store and, and all the rest of it, uh, I always like to ask people, you know, what, what it was, you know, the, the early part of their, uh, interest in, uh, in, you know, exploring, uh, you know, the universe in the way that they do, you know, and I know that you have, you're a guy with multiple passions. So, uh, how, what's your story? It's, um, well, you know, I, I, I grew up in North Carolina. Mm -hmm. I had a, a great mom and dad. I've got three younger brothers. Um, and I, my dad was always in the science. I'll show you some slides here in just a little bit where, you know, he built okay. his first telescope. Oh, and, wow. Uh, okay. When I was four years old. So I was addicted to that. Yeah. Yeah. Right. That was a whole different time. He loved aviation, but at that time he never had the money to learn to fly. Oh, and it's I've been it's blessed to be able to, to be able to do those things. Right. Flying has always been kind of expensive. There there yeah. are, are ways to get around that, but, uh, um, but that's true. It is. Yeah. I mean, the military is definitely the best way to go to get all your flight hours for on uncle Sam, if you will. But, right. uh, now a lot of those guys are flying drones, so not so much full size airplanes anymore. Right. Yeah. And I, ha I have a drone too, but, uh, nothing like the drones that you have. So we can, we can talk, we can touch on that a little bit too, because, uh, <laughs> We can't really tell the whole story about what what you do now and Atlanta Hobby without touching on a mu multitude of things. So uh, it's real inspiring me just to just to turn people on to new things that they might not have thought they could ever do. Uh, we have a flight school for drones, and to see somebody fly it the first time and their eyes light up, right? Or to get somebody a ride in in our nineteen forty five Stearman or our Satabria or our ultralight. It's, it's, it's so thrilling for me to be able to, to share the, you know, the blessings I've been able to have with other people. Right. Right. A, now, it's something that it's maybe a touchy subject for, for you, but uh, we talked about it when I met you at the winter star party and you mentioned that you were a cancer survivor, you know? Yeah. Uh, yep. Certainly a lot of us have had uh, family members or have ourselves gone through that transformation uh, what did that, how has that shaped things for you? I mean, it's, it, it is a, uh, you know, that, that is a tough thing to have to face. And, um, you know, what, what is it that, uh, are there lessons to be learned through it? I mean, a, a lot of lessons. I'll tell you, I, I have an 83 year old gentleman that works with me here at the shop. He's been here 13 years. Mm -hmm. His name's Russell. We call him Dr. Huff because he, seems to know more about this stuff than I'll ever learn. Okay. And he okay. always preached to us, do everything now, do everything now. And, you know, those type of things when you're 30 or 20 or 40, they kind of go in one ear and out the other because you're, you're too busy focusing on work. Yeah. And the day when I sat down with my doctor and I, and you know, he told me, I said, I looked at him really close. I said, you're telling me I have cancer. He said, yeah, I'm telling you that. Hmm. And I said, well, that's not a good option, you know? And so we went through all the things that we could do and I, I am cancer free. Thank God. Uh, uh, my one year anniversary will be on August 19th. Awesome. And I'm real excited about that. But sure. it's one of those things to where 
they talk to you about that and you go, okay, and you go home. And for a couple of weeks, you kind of let things register a little bit. Yeah. And start to see things different ways. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's really opened my eyes up and uh, I'm, I'm going full tilt boogie. I'm not stopping. If I want to do something, I'm doing it. You do right? it, right? <laughs> <laughs> now, I think that everybody should do that. You know, uh, uh, you know, I work around an environment that I love. You work around an environment that you love too. You know, uh, with people that you love, and and the the the, the thing that that uh, you know it drives us. We get to touch on it every day. Not everybody creates their or wraps their lives around that or sacrifices you know, uh, to do this kind of thing. I, I'm a believer that I'm a believer that everyone can, uh, but, uh, but, uh, you know, how many people, uh, uh, follow a path where they think that they're doing what they should. Okay. Based Absolutely. on what everybody else told them they should do. You know, I have clients that come in and I'm, I'm not your typical show. Let me tell your crowd that right now. Okay. I am <laughs> a long time astronomy fan. Yeah, I am a very new astronomy retailer. I mean, yes. just last year when we built this new showroom, you know, I, I called up my friends in the industry that I'd known and I said, OK, it's time. I need to do this. So mm -hmm. but since they've the telescopes, just one port have been here. I have people come in my shop and they see all these beautiful scopes. And yeah. They go, I've always wanted to do that. Right. And I look at them right in the face and I said, no, you don't. And they're like, well, what are you talking about? I said, because if you wanted to do it, you would do it. You'd already you know? done it. Let's <laughs> get back. <laughs> you know, the meter is running. Let me tell that's you. That's right. That's right. Yeah, that's right. But um, uh, you, you don't just sell the gear. You sell the experience, and um, uh, which is great. And you sell the edge. Um, you, you have the education. You you have the whole machine that makes it something that. Um, when people get the equipment, no matter what it is, whether it's the RC cars or the drones or whatever it is that you're doing, uh, these people are going to learn how to get the most out of it. And uh, a lot, of, look, a lot of businesses make the claim that they do that kind of stuff. And they take it about, eh, so far, or they might do like one event or they talk to them for a long time on the telephone, but you have a formal, stance on this. You really get in and you have classes and you have a program to make this happen. So we yeah. do we have a classroom here. Uh, I've got some pictures I can show you of doing that. And we okay. really enjoy teaching. I, I love it. I like seeing people light up when they get it. Right. And, you know, understand how to do it. We had a gentleman in just two weeks ago and he could not make his go to scope work. And it was six o'clock. We were closing and I hauled it out in the parking lot. It was D daylight still right but the moon was up and i showed him how to do the date and the time and all that good stuff and i and it moved over there and he was so ecstatic he, i thought he was going to turn cartwheels in the parking lot <laughs> because he had never been able to do that i'm sure he'll never forget it that's great that's great Just fantastic stuff well i'll let you uh, uh you have a presentation here so we'll bring it up and i'll let you go through it well i just i have a, a little slides because i'm i'm, I'm not a a telescope or astronomy expert. So I can't teach you about software or any exotic glass or anything, even okay. though you make some of the best out there in the world. But Thanks. this shot up on the screen, you know, my where I first met you was at the Winter Star Party in Key West. That's right. That's right. Good We're good at good. a, uh, now guys who, who really know me know that I'm a vegetarian. So what am I doing at a super dog stand? Okay. <laughs> I'm actually I'm buying a veggie dog. Um, but, uh, uh, it was a, it's a funny story because I'm, I'm standing here with one of my best friends, Gary Goebel is off to in there in the blue shirt. And, uh, uh, if you've ever been down to Key West, you know how much fun it is down there. Um, yep. but, uh, and we were having a good time, but I, I'm talking, I'm talking to you and I'm talking to Greg Bragg, who was also there. And, uh, I walk away and that guy with a light blue shirt comes running after me saying, Hey buddy, <laughs> are you going to pay me for those hot dogs? <laughs> that so, was a great night. And I appreciate you showing me all around down there. It, was, so. it sure was fun. I ask a lot of people in my classes, you know, what do you want to be when you grow up? Yeah. You know, a lot of our folks are, are grown ups and they don't understand what I'm talking about, but mm. I think the only way to do great work is to really love what you do and have fun. That's right. I've been in the corporate world for years, and I haven't wore a tie in 30 years now. Thank God. When I was 14, I discovered hang gliding and sailplanes, 
in a Popular Mechanics magazine. Guys flying off some sand dunes in California in the really early days. Uh huh. Built my very first uh, hang glider and then progressed from there. Uh, fly sailplanes now. You and I talked about sailplanes earlier. Wait, the, you built your first hang glider? Yeah, you know, a lot of people did. You know, you could build them out of bamboo with uh, garbage bags all duct taped together. <laughs> Those were exciting that's, days. So. That's exciting because I mean, you just go, okay, you jump on that thing and you start to fly it. And you're not just flying like. Well, in those days, we weren't ground, flying right? very high. You know, the rule was never fly higher than you're willing to fall. So now it's all aircraft quality stuff. It's high, you know, high end equipment. Still I, just I, so much fun. Yeah, the shot yeah. on the right is my son when he was five years old. He wanted to go for a flight, so we went for our first hang gliding flight and, oh, and really enjoyed it. So mom funny. was not home that day. I see. <laughs> uh, I'm addicted to everything that flies. I love RC sailplanes. Um, I'm addicted to motorcycles. It's a very bad disease, so mm. I try to avoid that. Mm -hmm. uh, I own the Satabria there in the middle. I own the sailplane, an ultralight, which you see my ugly toes down there in the right-hand corner. You're kind of sitting out in front of the ultralight. And, and I'm blessed. I live on an airport. You know, some people live on golf courses. Uh -huh. I play golf, so I, I had to learn how to fly. So yeah. uh, that's my super floater. Wow. Uh, only about 12 in the world. Uh -huh. I modeled after an old World War I primary trainer. But so they used to be made out of wood. This one, of course, is made out of aircraft materials. Right. And uh, we tow it up with our ultralight. And uh, that's over over our property there in Atlanta. So. Well, what a, you know, what a, you, know you, you you rank amongst the, one of the coolest uh, dealer uh, telescope dealers out there in the world. You know that does all this stuff. You know, so uh, <laughs> I can tell you have fun every day. This is good. <laughs> when you come to Atlanta, sometime we'll uh, eat some veggies and we'll go fly. Okay, sounds good. Uh, that sounds like the plan. My dad was in television for fifty years and taught me an awful lot about. Uh, not only broadcasting, but about photography. He, he was a, a really good photographer. So in high school, I was doing a little freelance for the television in a little bit. And then I went to work for a, a photography company, a startup. They had uh, three stores, two in Atlanta and one in Charlotte, North Carolina, where I was living at the time. Mm -hmm. uh, Wolf Camera and Video was the company. Right. And I spent uh, almost 30 years with them. I uh, was the president of the Photo Marketing Association, did a lot of work on uh, Eastman Kodak products back in the early days and they're building 69. That's a whole different story when digital was coming about. Right. So I worked closely with Sony and all those, all those people. We wrote some software in 95 that enabled you to share pictures, your pictures, film those days. Remember film? Sure. We had to, we could share yeah, I pictures remember. on the internet. <laughs> uh, oh, wait a minute. Wait, Facebook wait. You, you said in 1996. You would take film and what you would scan it and then put digitize it and then put it on the internet for people to pick yes. up images from we, we, in 1995. This was in 1995 when wow. everybody was on dial up. Yeah. Yes. Day, so. Wow, that was very advanced. Uh, the, the company was called Picture Vision at that time and uh, ended up selling it to Kodak and uh, America Online for 150, 160 million or so back in the days. Right. You know. When, Back on those days, it was all AOL. Remember, you, you've got mail would come on. That's when right. our software got into it. It was you've got mail and you've got pictures. Right. It'd also show you your pictures. So, yeah, it's kind of cool. Fun. It's very Boy, Things change, though. Times are changing. Yes. So our companies, I uh, started in uh, 1978. I called it Whitney's Glider Supply. I was in uh, high school at the time. Taught myself about mail order. The Internet, of course, was not there at that point. Mm-hmm. Wachee Valley Soaring, we sold hang gliders and outdoor equipment, bicycles and things. When my corporate job moved me to Atlanta, I moved it all here and we started Atlanta Hobby. Okay. So now there's three companies, Atlanta Hobby, UAV Experts, and with a very good friend of mine, also UAV Ground School. A UAV Ground School, we do uh, FAA test certification. We teach you to pass your FAA written test, right. be it for drones or for regular full-size airplanes as well. So. Been in aviation for 42 years. It's a, it's, it's a bad long time. It's a long time. You're only yeah. what, 43, 45? Yeah, yeah, yeah I wish. Okay. <laughs> I'm 60. Oh, okay, okay. Six oh. So. All right. 
about 20 folks in our company. We, I love them all. They're all a lot smarter than me, which you've learned being there, Explore Scientific, find good people and surround yourself that's, with them. That's what you do. That's exactly that's what you do. You got to do. And, and uh, so I, I love all of them. We, we have uh, three facilities, uh, one here in Atlanta, and then we also have some sister warehouses we ship out of in uh, Chicago area and out in California a little bit. So trying yeah. to get stuff to our clients faster. We just moved into our new showroom uh, in October. Before we had been in a in a big warehouse, mainly mail order. We had walk in traffic because nobody in our area did what we did. But now we're in a little more upscale store. Yeah, uh, thirty five thousand people go by the door every day, and uh, you know the shop's broken up into astronomy and and drones, wow. and uh, of course model airplanes, cars, and and stuff like that. So it's uh, about five thousand feet. We still have our mail order operations. Right. We do a, a really big uh, UAV business, so uh, drones. So there's a consumer side and there's an industrial side. The industrial side's our real focus. Mm-hmm. You know, our clients are Fox News, ABC, CBS, uh, police departments, fire departments, FEMA, Homeland Security. So we have a technical support area that can build and rebuild anything that might need to be done there. Really talented right. folks back right. there. So good, good stuff. That is great stuff. UAV Experts is our pro company. So this is uh, bigger drones. Um, we work with a lot of great folks. I've done work with NASA, uh, ship stuff all to Brazil. These are a uh, high end vertical takeoff fixed wing aircraft that you can put any type of sensors you can imagine in. For instance, we could fly your farm and I could tell you where you might need more fertilizer or less fertilizer. Or we can measure the moisture content below the ground level. Wow. I can look at your cows and tell you which ones might be sick or pregnant based on their temperature signatures. Wow. Uh, we work with the SWAT teams to help them see the bad guys before they have to go into a, you know, a situation like that. Sure. Uh, fire departments, very powerful for fire departments. If you're on a roof and the house is on fire, you know, we can measure down to the pixel level what the temperature is. So tell you maybe where to step and not step so you don't fall through that roof. Wow. So you're, I mean, you guys are saving lives. I mean, that's, that's incredible. You know, most people see drones of what the news reports. Right. And I always beat on my colleagues at the major news networks because I say, you're always talking about the negatives of drones. Why don't you tell what's really happening out there? Why don't you tell about the eight Alzheimer's patients that were found just last week when the, the police couldn't find them, but we fly drone and, and sense their body temperature and, you know, they're only 300 feet from their house. Right. There's a lot of stuff that drones are doing really, really good. Agricultural, mapping, it's it's powerful stuff, so fun. I, There's some is, company we work I with. I small one for, for uh, uh, just getting the lay of land of uh, star party sites and stuff like that. But, and that's primarily yeah. what I use it for, but. You know, it, uh, it enhances your videos. It makes things a lot more pleasing. Think where real estate sales would be without a good, quick aerial shot. True. That's true. So, uh, we are really big on training. Uh, we're bringing this into the astronomy side, but mm-hmm. uh, we uh, were holding classes that were this size, 100 people or so. Right. But about seven years ago, we stopped and we regrouped and we said, look, let's hold. There's no way over three days we can teach 100 people to fly effectively. So now our classes are limited from 12 to 14 people. They're okay. two-day programs. We spend a lot of time teaching people hands-on, all the software and details to really make them good pilots. Mm-hmm. Worked really good. We're expanded that out into astronomy now. There's a, a shot of our very first astronomy class. Yeah, that looks like Greg Bragg right there. So that's Greg, great. Greg came in and taught it for me. We put it up online as a free program. Right. And we had almost 70 people come. Uh, we had to end up doing uh, three or four presentations during the day, uh, so I, I was I was shocked. Right. I learned a lot, and we got to meet a lot of great people. Right. Great. So we're going to be doing a lot more of these, and we're going to structure our programs now to where you'll come in in the morning. Okay. And we'll teach you a little about astronomy, but then take a break, and we'll show back up at my house, only three miles from the shop at night. And okay. we'll do all the viewing at night to show them how it actually works. Oh, that's cool. You know, how that's do you do cool. a polar alignment, you know, or 
or how does this right. go to thing or what's the difference in a your eyepieces are fantastic for that because I can show Thank a very you. narrow eyepiece and then I can show a really wide one yep. and, and teach them the difference in it. That's People don't know that because they don't have the ability to come in and, and touch and feel all of this stuff. You know, and that's the big difference. That's one of the things, Cliff, that's, that's something I, need, I, I really want to point out here uh, is that uh, when I started in this industry in, in 1980, there were shops with gear that you could see on display in hundreds or thousands of stores across the United States. There are very, very few retail shops anymore where you can walk in, you can see the equipment on display, you can talk to somebody who understands something about it. Uh, even, but even during that time, there was very few shops that you could say, well, what, could, what can you tell me or what can I learn? And they would say, well, you know what, we have classes scheduled, okay? Uh, in our classroom, okay, yep. that's something that you offer, and so you're you're really offering something that today, I mean, your your business is already a standout because uh, you got you have telescopes on display, got people can come in and kick the tower tires, they don't have to wait for someone to show up at a star party or uh, for um, you know or or just to see it online and listen to. Uh, you know, opinion about how this works versus how that works or whatever. You can actually see it and get your hands on it. And that is that is very, very powerful. It's a lot different than seeing a picture and reading specs and actually being able to touch it. Right. Yeah. It's amazing to me how fast the, you know, we're in an area that that really did not have an astronomy dealer here in Georgia. I mean, big state, big city of Atlanta and even their surrounding states, there's really not much. And I've had clients, I had one just call me the other day, he goes, Mm -hmm. uh, your website says you have a 24 millimeter, 68 degree explore scientific eyepiece. Said, yes. <laughs> Is your store open? Like, can I come and actually see it? Get it? Yeah. Right. Yeah, you can come see it and touch it. You have telescopes on display? Well, yeah, about uh, 20 or 25. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It's really great to, right. to be able to, to hear that and have them come in and, and it's fun. Good stuff. I really wanted one of the reasons why I wanted you to set up right in front of your telescopes like that is I wanted the people to see how amazing this this place looks. So it's I, you got a good angle there, you know. Okay. And so I, I like that. I like the technology is amazing to me, and it, yeah. and there's nothing better to get a group out at your facility. This is some of our drone training. Right. But to the same thing with astronomy, we're really looking forward to it this summer and as we go into winter. To, to be able to share this stuff. And, and I'm learning. I learn every time I go out and do some stuff. So Yeah. I mean, this is a theory of stuff, uh, too. Look at this. That's our FAA uh, certification program. Yeah. We've had 18,000 people go through the program in the past four years. Okay. We teach them how to pass their FAA test. Mm-hmm. So it's just, uh, you know, we have a, a media company called UAV Expert News. We have about 42,000 people on our distribution list over the years. Wow. This is a website that doesn't sell anything. It's all free, but we post informational stories and articles about the UAV market, and we're working on one under the covers about astronomy, but I just have to get a lot more educated before I go sticking my head out there. I know cloudy nights and all the great places are out there, and I'm reading and studying like crazy, so yeah. we put I'm doing some things in but the future. You are, you are a uh, you're you're a quick a quick study though. So I, I I I saw how quickly you were picking things up even at the Winter Star Party, you know, and to be a such a you know so young in the game of telescope retail and to already be attending a major star party. There's a lot of dealers that won't do that, and so I, I was really it, it uh, warmed my heart to see that. You know, I'm so like, excited. I can see. The, the photography aspects of this advancing so fast. Yeah. And I know digital photography very, very well. And I've already been talking to all the camera dealers and, and uh, spent quite a lot of money that's coming shortly for those cameras. But I, I see all of that. I'm, that's And that's hurting my brain really bad hmm. right now. Well, <laughs> that's a, one of our typical industrial units on the screen. About $40,000. Whoa. Three cameras. Yeah. Uh, works at sub-zero temperatures. The batteries have built-in heaters. Uh, its accuracy for mapping is down to the sub-centimeter level. 
Wow. So I, can, I can map a field or a rock quarry or something better than you could do it manually, and I can do it quick. I mapped uh, 83 acres the other day in just under 40 minutes to the sub-centimeter level accuracy. So that's wow. the kind of thing you can do with drones. Very cool. So, Very cool. So what do you want to be when you grow up? Are you doing it? <laughs> I think I, think I am, <laughs> and I know you are. <laughs> enjoying it and having a great time. I'm, I'm just, you know, but times are changing. You know, when I grew up, that's how we sent text. Yes, that's and, right. And that's, that was our cell phones. Just look at how fast all of that stuff has changed. Oh, yeah. I mean, we used to get our daily blog, you know, it came looking <laughs> like that. So all of this stuff has changed, and it's so exciting. My dad... Bill, there's this very first telescope in 1963. I was four years old. Yeah. He found some mirrors. Okay. And he wrote to a local company that made cardboard tubes and wrote this long dissertation about what he wanted. And they sent him a couple for free. Nice. He built that custom equatorial mount you see there out of pipe. And then you got to love the counterweight. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Concrete. So hey, I man, that gets the job old. done, and it's a beautiful telescope. Look at that. I remember, you know, looking at the moon and stuff. Sure. And that was my first introduction to to uh, astronomy. And that picture, uh, Dad's also great with photography and color. It's colorized, so he built all of that. So. Oh, yeah. But now it's all changed. I mean, you know, there's a 14-inch Rosa sitting there. There you go. There you go. I don't know how the hell to use it, but I got one. <laughs> well, you will learn how to use it, and that's that's the main point. So, so you know. really, really exciting. But above all of that, I think it's really important to, you know, to, to be inspired is great, and I'm inspired, you know, very inspired about this stuff. But you have to share that. Yes, you have to inspire other people, and it's really powerful to turn them on to and let them see things or touch an airplane or see Saturn for the first time and hear a 14-year-old kid cuss because he saw it. No. <laughs> right. It's really, really cool. And I think we need to do that. And we need to bring up these young kids because, you know, Scott, we got to have somebody to sell our old stuff to so we can get the new stuff. Get the new stuff. That's right. <laughs> I'm getting all this got to give them up. a break on the price. So there we yeah, go. The dock opens up in the day. It's like Christmas. And I'm like, oh, I got to sell this so I can get this new stuff now. That's right. That's it's right. really powerful. So I would encourage all of your folks out there to inspire other people. Yes. Come out. Do the outreach. And uh, you know, I talk a, lot, a lot of the people watching tonight. 15-year-old telescope that was broke. And there was no software upgrades. And I said, take it out there and use it for outreach. Show your kids. And come down here, and I'll I'll get you some new stuff. Right, um, that's powerful right. stuff. Really powerful. Yeah. So. Well, we had a lot of people here join us tonight. Uh, some regulars: uh, Rachel Sims Brooks was here, Anshul Puri from uh, L.A., uh, Perseus uh, actually watching from Africa. Caesar is watching from uh, Argentina. Okay, he's he's uh, with our dealership down there. Um, we have uh, Bergman Scooter, who watches almost every program we do, which is great. Dusty Haskins, um, uh, also watching. And um, uh, Ansel says, very inspiring story. Thank you for sharing. Uh, uh, Dusty says, it seems like, uh, seems like drone pretty much pay for themselves if you do any kind of videography. Do you think that is the case? Oh, he wants to know if they pay for themselves. I mean, they are almost getting to be a must. Uh, well, you know, the drones today, I hate to say the word, but the consumer-based drones are better than the television industry needs. Most TV that you watch is, you know, it's sub-HD. It's done in 720 or barely HD at 720. Mm -hmm. uh, a simple little $1,300 drone's got a 20 megapixel chip and is broadcast quality. If you oh, look at oh. the major networks, they're not flying $35,000 machines. No. They're flying $2,000 machines, maybe some $10,000 machines we have, and they're broadcasting live. Now, as to the business, let me be real up front. A business is a business. You own your business. I own my business. Yes. In the early days of drones, we were selling 1000 to 2000 a month. Everybody thought they were going to buy a drone and they were going to be a real estate photographer. There's an art and a science to photography. Yes. And there is an art and a science and a dedication level that is unbelievable to run a business. Yes. If you 
buy a drone, you are not going to get rich sitting it on your desk. <laughs> <laughs> you need to run a business. <laughs> and it's hard. It's, it's hard. Very hard. It's hard. You have to be there every day. But the main part is you got to show up. You got to show up every day, you know, and you got to keep moving the needle a little bit further all the time. Yes. Exactly You'll make mistakes, right. but, uh, you know, uh, wouldn't you rather be making mistakes following your dream and your passion and your inspiration? Wouldn't you rather be doing that than not doing it? So Absolutely. Right? And, and to that, I go back and I say, why aren't you doing it? Right. If nothing else... Uh, you know, next next uh, next Friday, no, sorry, next Saturday is my 39th anniversary. We're going to the beach for four nights. I'm taking my telescope and I'm taking my drone. And, and you're taking a drone. I have a wonderful wife, and she said that's a good idea because I have a stack of books and I only want to see you for margaritas. <laughs> <laughs> well, but congratulations on 39 years, man. That's awesome. That is awesome. And congratulations on on your business too. I mean, it's uh, I know that you're a uh, you've been a successful story for a long time. It, that's not easy to do, and uh, um, so uh, you know. But I'm, I as I told you at the Winter Star Party, I think you're going to make a difference in this industry, uh, and you already have. So uh, real happy to see uh, what you've done so far, and I hope that you join us again in the future. Um, you know, with uh, some experience that you're doing in astronomy, um, uh, you know, and if you ever need me to be in one of your trainings or whatever, let me know. I'll, I'm happy to uh, to We're going to do that. Your company has been unbelievable helping me. Thank you very much. All time that we got to spend down there at the Winter Star Party and interacting with you guys and the rest of the folks in your company since then, learning about your eyepieces, which are just fantastic. Thank you. Um, you can't find many suppliers and manufacturers like that. Today, it's all write me a letter and I'll tell you. You can pick up the phone and call you guys, which is unbelievable. Yes. And good answer. And sometimes I've got the phone in this ear talking to somebody at your place and I got the phone in the other ear talking to my client. And it makes me look good. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, we are, by the way, I'm uh, already tr making plans, if they have it, to come out to Oklahoma in September for the spar party out there for the, the Okie yeah, yeah, that's a, uh, it's a, it's a big question. Um, uh, you know, some of my friends have already been contacting me about that. Uh, so we'll have to see how this plays out. Um, it is way out in the middle of nowhere. Uh, so you're not going to be, uh, too worried about, uh, you know, social distancing. Um, uh, the star party field itself is pretty big. So the Okie Tex is, is certainly a possibility. And, uh, you know, it's about a, from here, it's a straight shot off of the 412. We're actually off the 412 here. So we're somehow connected with the same spot or the same line as uh, the Okie Tex. Um, but uh, if, if it's on, uh, you'll see me there. So I, I hope, I hope yeah. they do it. It's about 1200 miles from here, but I'm looking forward to it. All right. Well, if you need to make a pit stop, stop here in Springdale and uh, uh, I'll show you around. We'll drag you out. I look forward to that. Okay. All right. Uh, 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 Cliff, thank you so much for spending all this time uh, this evening. And, uh, you know, uh, there, there are people here wishing they, that they were actually closer to Atlanta so they could walk into the store tonight <laughs> and get that well, after hours tour. They come visit us and, uh, you know, if it's a cloudy night, we'll get the airplane out and go play. All right. All right. You take care. Thank and uh, for all the rest of you guys, uh, thank you so much for tuning in. Our next Explore Now program uh, is going to take a focus on uh, solar astrophotography with uh, Gary Palmer. That's going to be on Friday uh, about 6 p.m. I think is the air time for that. And uh, Gary's going to stay up way late at night so he can do that broadcast live from London. So take care and uh, we'll talk to you later. Keep looking up. Night.